Hello everyone, welcome back. So in the last class, we talked about the path planning of uh, mobile robots and uh, mentioned that um, there are uh, two steps involved in uh, path navigation of the robot. One is the path planning and the other one is the obstacle avoidance. And for path planning, we used uh, different methods of uh, path planning uh, uh, strategies uh, for uh, identifying a, a feasible path for the robot to move from its current position to the goal position. And uh, graph search is one of the commonly used method, which is an offline uh, planning method. So, in graph search, first we try to make a graph of all possible paths from the start to goal position. And then we search within that graph to find out the best feasible path. So, that is basically the uh, graph search method of uh, path planning. And in this uh, method, we saw uh, two methods uh, for finding out the uh, paths. So, one is the visibility graph, the other one is uh, Voronoi diagram. Uh, visibility graph and Voronoi diagram uh, uses the configuration space to identify feasible paths. In the visibility graph method, uh, we try to find out a path which is very close to the uh, obstacle. But in the Voronoi diagram, we try to get a path which is uh, far away from the obstacle. So, that is the primary difference between these two methods. So, we will see the, the third method which is known as the cell decomposition method. So, in cell decomposition, what we do is to we will decompose the whole uh, uh, workspace or the, uh, the environment into multiple cells and then look at these cells to see which one is occupied, which one is not occupied. And then we try to find a uh, uh, path through all the unoccupied cells to reach the target. So, that is basically the uh, cell decomposition methods. Okay. And uh, there are two methods, one is known as the exact cell decomposition and the other one is approximate cell decomposition. So, in the exact cell decomposition, it is a lossless decomposition where approximate uh, decomposition represents an approximation of the original map. And then a graph is then formed through a specified connectivity relation between cells. So, that is in exact cell decomposition, we make sure that there are cells which are occupied or not occupied. But in approximate, there may be cells which are partially occupied and which are partially uh, uh, unoccupied also. So, that is the difference between these two methods. There are advantages in using uh, both these methods. So, we will first look into the exact cell decomposition. So, what does exact cell decomposition say is that you have a map of the environment with obstacle and th this is the obstacle. So, like this. So, you divide them into exact cells of occupied or unoccupied. So, what I will do? I will divide this into this way. I will put another one here, another obstacle and then I will try to connect all these and then say which one is occupied. So, all the this will be occupied and I will uh, connect divide this into cells like this. So, these are all and similarly I will connect this and I will connect this. So, I have divided this into multiple cells. Now, you can see I can call this as cell 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 like this. So, it is an exact cell decomposition where I have divided this into different cells and then I will say that okay, all these cells are unoccupied 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, any path through these cells will be always feasible to reach the target point. Suppose now this is the start and this is the goal. I can say that I can connect between these all unoccupied cells. So, 5 and 6 can be connected, 6 and 7 can be connected, 7, 8 can be connected, 8, 9 can be connected, 9, 11 can be connected and 9, 11, 13, uh, 13 can be connected. So, I can find a, a path through the uh, free cells or I can go from here to 12 and then go to here and then do this. So, 
all uh, the, the decomposition primarily decomposes the whole area into cells which are occupied or unoccupied and then all unoccupied cells can be connected to get a connectivity relation and that connectivity relation between cells can be used for planning the path. So, that is basically the excite cell decomposition methods. Okay, so, the, the cells are either completely or uh, completely occupied or unoccupied. So, that is the thing it is completely occupied free or completely occupied and therefore, plot planning the network is complete like the roadmap based method seen earlier. So, once that is done then you can go for the uh, graph uh, construction using the other methods and then get the uh, graph. So, that is basically the exact cell decomposition. So, the, uh, the basic abstraction behind such computer that particular position of the robot within each cell of free space does not matter. So, we do not really worry whether the robot uh, is in a particular position within the cell as long as the robot can actually reach that cell then it can actually go to the next cell that is the understanding here. So, the robot's ability to transverse from one from each free cell to the adjacent free cell. So, as long as the robot can move from one free cell to the other free cell then it is a, a feasible path. So, this is basically the exact cell decomposition method of path planning. So, the, the, the efficiency depends on the number of uh, uh, cells and the number of obstacles and basically number of obstacles decide the number of the uh, cells also. So, as this is very uh, dense uh, with obstacle then you will be having large number of cells and that may become little bit complex for the uh, path planning otherwise it is a good method of planning. So, as you can see here now I have uh, uh, this uh, obstacles these are the obstacles and then you have this uh, cells identified. So, now you can see if this is the start so you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 12, 13, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18. There are 18 cells which are not occupied and therefore, you can identify suitable paths along this. So, you can see that can be 1 to 7, you can have 1 to 7 or 1 to 2, you can have 1 to 2, then 2 to 3, 3 to 4, then 7 to 8, 9, 10. So, you will be able to create a, a graph like this in order to plan the path. So, this actually gives you the uh, all feasible paths from the cells unoccupied cells. So, now, if you want to travel from 7 to uh, 15, you can find that 7, 8, 9, 10, 14, 15 is one path or you can take uh, another path like this also and then reach here 15 or there are multiple ways you can reach and uh, which one is the shortest depends on uh, again other criteria which we need to decide. But this is the first thing where you create the graph and then say that okay, these are the potential uh, paths existing or the uh, possible paths existing from the uh, uh, start to goal position. So, that is basically the exact cell decomposition. Okay, so, these are the uh, uh, roadmaps that you can create using the uh, cell decomposition. So, the uh, advantage is that you will be having uh, you can actually get all the other it is occupied or unoccupied. So, that you can always plan the path without any uh, any cells having any obstacles, but that actually creates uh, uh, a bit difficulty because of the, the cells the, the way it is being arranged and uh, sometimes you may find it very difficult to uh, decide from which point it is actually, actually move to the next one. because the the cell size may be a bit uh, big compared to the other methods. And to avoid that one, we go for something called an approximate cell decomposition. So, that you will be having a, a much more uh, uh, capability for to plan the path in a, a much more efficient way. So, here what we do, we will uh, uh, fix the size of the cell and then divide the whole area into grids and then look at which are the grids occupied fully and which are the occupied uh, grids occupied partially. So, we will have partial occupation and the full occupation of the grids and then we will de decide to go from start to goal based on the nearest grid you try to find out the nearest grid and then start moving and uh, whenever there is a, a next grid is uh, occupied you try to move to the 
uh, unoccupied grid and then keep moving that, that way you will be able to find out a path. So, you will be able to get a path from here through any of these grids and then reach the goal and again you will be having multiple uh, possibilities to go through the grids and reach, grid and reach here. So, that is the approximate cell decomposition. So, approximate cell decomposition uh, has got its own uh, benefits because you will be able to get a much better uh, uh, search using the approximate uh, cell decomposition. But the number of grids and number of cells increases and that may make uh, the computation little, little bit uh, costlier. Otherwise, it is a, a good method of uh, decomposition and then getting the graph. So, as you can see here, you will be always using the uh, unoccupied cells only. You will be always uh, marking the partially occupied cell also, which is not, uh, which will not be using. It will be going along the, uh, it look for the uh, completely uh, free grids and then start a path or plan a path according, uh, along that those uh, grids. That is the approximate cell decomposition methods. So, now you can see that there are uh, uh, multiple uh, methods to find out the, to have a, a graph. So basically, you are trying to create roadmaps from start to goal using multiple methods. So, once you have this uh, graph, the next question is to how, okay, how do I identify the best path or the, the most feasible path from start to goal. And for that, we go for a graph search. Okay, we go for deterministic graph search where we assume that we know the uh, values of uh, travel cost and other things. And based on that, we search within the graph and then find out the best uh, uh, path. So, that is basically the graph search. So, we already have the connectivity graph using one of the graph searching met methods. And then the goal of path planning is to find the best path in terms of the, connect in the uh, maps connectivity graph and the best refers to the selected optimization criteria. So, you can have it as a shortest path or the shortest time or the shortest cost of travel, whatever may be the uh, uh, criteria you use that becomes the uh, best method, best uh, uh, path. So, we based on this criteria, we can actually have a, an algorithm to search. So, normally what we do, we will have a, a, a expected cost and this cost will be minimized. So, the cost, it can be uh, the cost of travel, time of travel, distance to be traveled, whatever it is. So, we define a, a, a function, an expected cost function as fn and then try to minimize this and try to find a path which, are, which, which gives you the minimum uh, uh, cost, try expected total cost. And that is a search. So, you search in all the possible paths and then find out which one gives you the minimal cost, that path will be the best path for you or that is the uh, most feasible path for your application. So, what we do? We have an expected cost f n and we will define it as a sum of g n which is the travel cost or the path cost, accumulated cost for traveling from start node to end node. Plus, we define some more thing as a, a heuristic cost epsilon multiplied by h n. Okay, so, the uh, total cost will be f n and then g n will be the path cost from moving from one point to the other point and then we will have an additional cost called a heuristic cost which can be added or it can be neglected also. But this heuristic cost will be based on uh, what additional criteria you want to give in order to search for the uh, best uh, possible path. So, if h n is uh, not there, then we put epsilon is equal to 0. That means, it is only f n is equal to g n which is the total cost of traveling from point to point or if there is a h n want to be included, then we put the epsilon is equal to 1 and then we consider the uh, heuristic cost also. So, I will explain this and we take some examples of uh, uh, graph search methods. But primarily, we want to define a function of cost function which can be uh, used for finding out the best uh, path. Okay, so, g n is constant, then we have uh, multiple uh, algorithms available. Uh, so, when we keep g n is a constant, that is traveling from one point to the next point, the next point, if the cost of this g n is constant between this, each one of these, so this one is equal to this cost is same, then we have many methods called uh, depth first, uh, breadth first search methods. When g n is varying, 
then we have something called a Dijkstra algorithm. And then when epsilon is not equal to 0, that is when epsilon is equal to 1 or you additional consider an additional uh, heuristic cost, we have algorithms called A star. Of course, there are uh, multiple algorithms available for graph search in the literature. I am just uh, talking about uh, only very few where we have this something called depth first and breadth first approach in which we assume that the travel from one grid to the other grid is the cost of traveling from one grid to the other grid is always constant. There is no variation between grid to grid travel. That is the depth first and breadth first approach. And then we have uh, uh, when this gn is varying that means the travel cost is uh, this money may be 20 and traveling from I mean 1 to 2, 2 to 3 I would say this is 20, but 2 to 3 is 30. That means the costs are not same between the grids. Then that is gn is not constant and then that kind of, uh, uh, then in that case we have an algorithm called Dijkstra algorithm. And then even if uh, it is varying or constant and uh, still you need to have a, a, a h also that is an epsilon is not equal to 0, then we call, we have an algorithm called A star algorithm. Of course, there are um, many more such algorithms available in the literature. So, we will uh, look into these algorithms and then see how these algorithms can be used for searching the uh, most feasible path. So, we will look into this in the uh, next class and then see how we can actually identify methods or how can we use these uh, algorithms for finding out the most feasible path or the optimal path from start to go that uh, discussion we will have in the next class. Thank you.